Florida Congressman, a retired U.S. Army veteran who also served with the Israeli Defense Forces, Brian Mass, joins me. Good evening, sir. And your thoughts, because this has now actually become a very different war, because it's Iran from its own land, from its own mass, land mass, into Israel for the first time, and the United States engaging defensively. But things have definitely changed in the last 18 hours. I think two very important takeaways we look at. One, the effectiveness of the air defense systems, uh, Iron Dome, David Sling, Aero Systems, which, by the way, there were 40 House Democrats, Nancy Pelosi being one of them, that wrote a letter last week saying no more arms transfers to Israel. That would mean not restocking those things. The other thing that I think is very important uh, in all of this, and you touched upon uh, President Biden saying that we're not going to participate in any kind of retaliation. This was telegraphed already, and I think it's part of what leads to this kind of attack from Iran. General McKinsey, CENTCOM commander, recently retired, now out of uniform, has been very clear that when he was there, the Biden administration said very specifically that Iran is off the table as a target. And to him, what that meant was aid and comfort for the enemy. It meant if they're off the table, there is no deterrence for Iran. So now we see a continuation of that policy with them saying in the midst of Israel being hit directly by Iran, the United States of America will not be a part of hitting back. That's a continuation of what General McKenzie was speaking about. Don't you make the assumption that Iran was well aware of the uh, defense system that uh, Israel has and had the expectation that it would fall flat? Because all, when you look at it, it was a very sort of feckless, pathetic uh, attack by Iran because nothing really happened. There was, there was one child who was injured, and my heart goes out to that child. But in general, it was, it was a failed attack on Israel. It absolutely was. Uh, certainly, they have the intelligence capabilities to understand the short range of Iron Dome, the mid range uh, of, of David Sling, and the long range and ballistic missile capabilities of the Aero system. They understand that just like much of the, the rest of the world does. I don't think Iran would go out there and say to anybody that they were simply trying to save face. Uh, but when you look at this and you combine this with how do you get back at Iran, let's move it to a different part of this war. You get back at Iran in part by hitting all of their proxies, which they have effectively used for years, whether it be Hamas, whether it be Hezbollah, whether it be the, the Houthis in Yemen, take your pick. And that means also that we pay attention to the conversation of Israel going and continuing uh, the mission into Rafah. Not to be so flip, but in many ways, it's that old movie, The, the Mouse That Roared, where you have someone who, who launches a big, huge force and then, of course, uh, is, is grossly ineffective. But let me turn to the issue as, you know, Israel right now, the War Cabinet is meeting. And they're trying to decide what to do um, or not to do next. They can either retaliate and escalate it further. And, of course, President Biden says that he won't be joining along. The United States won't be. Or they can just, you know, they can just ignore it and think that, you know, that Iran is just not effective, although they can spread cash around to Hamas and Hezbollah and create a lot of uh, damage that way. But what would you expect, or if you were advising the war cabinet, what would you tell them tonight? I would advise Israel to continue doing exactly what they have built a reputation that they do. When Israel put ordinance into Iran, it wasn't to indiscriminately kill civilians like what Iran just did to Israel with close to 300 Sahid 136 drones. It was a very specific and intentional target with a strategic mission and a tactical purpose. When Israel goes into Gaza, it's very specifically against military targets for specific purposes to take out Hamas, their leadership, their fighters, you name it. Continue in that aim with any conflict that you're fighting. There's a strategy. There's a tactic to reach that strategy and that goal. And as long as they're working in that way, then they're doing it the right way. It's, it's a little bit different, though, because fighting in, um, in Gaza is against, for all intents and purposes, an, idea, an ideology. Hamas, they hate Israel. So, of course, so does Iran. But Iran is a nation. Iran also has, at least we believe, um, it has it was close to nuclear weapons. Has quite a, you know, there are other ways to deliver damage besides sending a bunch of missiles and drones up into the air. You can do, I don't know if they have chemicals. I don't know if they have uh, biological weapons. I don't know what they have. But, you, you know, but they are certainly lit on fire, so to speak. You know, they, you know, if Israel does react, you know, they say that they're going to react back and then when it's going to keep going until somebody wins, but everybody probably yeah, well lose. I mean, let's answer what we do know we ha they have. You said very specifically, they're close to a nuclear weapon. Now, whether they can actually produce, uh, you know, an Oppenheimer weapon, a, a critical mass, what people have seen in the movies, uh, that's yet to be seen. But they certainly have the ability to uh, produce a dirty weapon, spread fissile material, make an area 
unusable because of the fissile material they've put along uh, any kind of area. Yes, that's a very real threat. And uh, again, to think that they wouldn't use one of their proxies uh, surrounding the whole of Israel to do that, I think there's a belief that they would. And I think that goes again to what I advised, whether it's Gaza or whether it's, it's somewhere in Iran, you have a strategy, you have a specific target, and they continue to hit the specific targets for specific reasons. Uh, and that is their MO, and I think they're successful in using that as their MO. Congressman Brian Bash, thank you, sir. Thank you, Greta. Coming up.